Hey everyone, welcome back to another StarCraft 2 weekend. We are of course continuing our Numericable Cup uh, finals. Uh, this is of course uh, between uh, DiMaggio and uh, Marine King Prime. On uh, the, the Tomb, the Valley on the top right, we do have the blue Terran player as a Marine King Prime, while on the bottom left we do have DiMaggio of course as uh, the green Terran player. Now the previous two games have been very, very good. If you haven't watched them, I would highly recommend you watch them. It is uh, really turning out to be a very, very nice final between these two players. Of course, one of uh, the best players out there, one of the two best players out there are up against each other. So the finals is really something to watch and something to learn. Otherwise, in terms of the last weekend, I haven't been able to uh, get up a commentary as I was sick, so I'm going to be catching up to it today. And uh, that's pretty much it. Just to fill you in, we do have uh, those uh, double barrack build followed by that orbital command which is uh, really uh, in a way marine king's signature build i do see that quite a lot happening here very nice uh, overlord placement we do have overlords placed all across the sides of the map of course to keep an eye out for any drops uh, that uh, marine king might be doing so that is, that is something to keep in mind metabolic boost is coming on as well, online as well so we're going to have that zergling speed upgrade happening very very soon third base is happening as well uh, including a third hatchery for a uh, dimaggio again is uh, being built up as well so that's pretty much it we do have that scout out by that zergling is going to be moving in i do believe he's going to be targeting firing that scv yeah he is going for that scv scv being pulled off destructible tuber just managed to drop so he does fry that zergling and does manage to continue his actual third expansion with without any actual harass now he is moving in again those hellions to try to prevent any actual continuing of the creep tumor from happening by dimaggio keeping that creep at bay is very very key as uh, pretty much the zerglings have a massive advantage being on the crete and uh, proved to be a hell of a lot more effective of course giving that additional scout out so keeping that creep nicely at bay is really really key in terms of having that advantage now we do have a lot of bailings as well happening here even though we do have a lot of hellions as well they're going to be they're going to be uh, busting in and uh, even though with that nice little spread a little bit of uh, microing happening here still proving to be very effective these bailings are managing to take care of a lot of these units and we do have two more bailings in play so this is going to be sort of in a way a marine king does have a little bit of advantage here but uh, not, not enough to push through not enough to break through and he does know that as he does manage to actually retreat back we do have two more barracks in play is he he's, he's going to be going for this hellion harass uh, bio hellion harass so we're going to have a lot of marines as we do have two more reactors probably going to be throwing down another two more reactors as i do more know marine king he really does go for his reactors early on in the game now DiMaggio so far is having a little bit of an upper hand as uh, if he's going to be going for those double reactors he's going to have a massive advantage even though he does split up the actual marines it's still not enough to really counter even a few of these bailings as the bailings do manage to take out a lot of these marines very very quickly and easily now again a very nice placement by the bunker bunker is placed on the back side of his second expansion which means he will probably be placing down another supply depot to block it off and maybe move off somewhere else we'll see exactly what it decides to do maybe we'll just keep it as it is because it is walled off so i think it'll be fine and uh this bunker of course uh, does cover the actual ramp itself and of course uh, protects the actual supply line so really nice placement by the bunker here and uh, he's going to be finally walling it off with a lot of supply depots really narrowing it in so a lot any zergling streaming across are going to be forced to go in that tunnel and again he's going to be trying to be walling off that actual third as well with supply depots so so far so good uh, marine king is really trying to get up that uh, fortification and uh, those wall off as m early as possible so finally He's going to be having a full wall off on that third base, maybe placing down another barrack or at least one siege tank to prevent any small little harasses coming in and to keep that wall from it being taken down would be a good idea. Otherwise, the Maju is having infestors being thrown into the mix now, so he's going to be going really up for that uh, marine build by Marine King. So I don't really see a Marine King being able to counteract this build. Let's take a look at... This is going to be pretty much mopped up. He should load him up on and he does load him up to save him. Uh, let's take a look at the actual racks. Yeah, we do have a lot of reactors in play. But we do have five racks in total. Six, six racks in total. No, five racks in total. Out of which four are marines. But so far, the Majo's composition of uh, infestors and uh, bailings are pretty much going to mop that out. Especially with the zerglings uh, having already the 1-1 one -one upgrades. Do we have the 2-2 two -two already on the way? Yeah, we do have the 2-2 two -two on the way. So, so far, DiMaggio is uh, on par, if not a little bit ahead in terms of upgrades and composition to really counteract Marine King's build. So, finally, he does manage to siege up the tanks a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, he gets caught a little bit off guard. These, this is pretty much going to drop. 
He, he did get flanked out, so all of this is going to be mopped up very, very quickly. Fungals being placed down by the infestors, and that is the end of Marine King's trying trial of harassing. So, no, not not really effective at all. DiMaggio pretty much completely took care, took out this actual win to himself. So that's it. I don't know why Marine King doesn't decide to build more barracks and have a more attack tech labs in play. He really needs a lot of tech lab. He should be able to mop this up. There's no bailings at all. And this uh, marine composition is pretty much fine, even though these bailings are going to be mopping up uh, the rest of uh, the marines. But he should pretty much be able to survive uh, this actual harass. Finding the medevacs being moved into play and keeping these uh, marines al alive. So that's key. Finally, do we have the tech labs? Yeah, we do have the tech labs. So Marine King is going to be switching in to his... Uh, uh, switching into building more marauders to really counteract uh, these bailings and of course uh, the fungal by the infestors. So uh, concussive shell should be actually happening. Yeah, it is just just about started the moment I mentioned it. So that's pretty good. Fourth base happening in for a marine king and the fifth for, of course, uh, Dimaggio. Now with uh, these actual tech labs, a lot of marauder production should be happening now to really counteract and be able to absorb those uh, bailings is really key to be able to survive this uh, bailing infester rush by DiMaggio. So the question is, will he actually be able to counteract it and, and survive? Or will he actually be able to get enough uh, marauders in production to uh, be able to absorb the damage? Because so far, no matter how much he's going to be pushing out, even with this composition, if he doesn't siege up the tanks, he does have a nasty habit of moving in. Marine King does have a habit of moving in and then sieging up the tanks while he moves in. So, again, he doesn't have those tanks sieged up. And before they actually siege up, like now, finally, he does have them sieged up into play. Those were the three, four seconds really key to be able to do that additional damage. Though, even though the fungals have been placed down, he does have plenty of medevacs to get uh, those uh, marines and uh, bio ball healed up very, very quickly. So, that's fine. Again, he's moving in with the tanks. Doesn't scan. So, before he sieges them up, these tanks are going to be surrounded and dropped. Here comes the siege. Tanks are going to be dropping again. A little bit of miss micro by Marine King. Very nice fungal. You see uh, the actual Marauders do manage to absorb a little bit of that damage. Again, he did place the Marauders within the back and not within the front. So again, we do have uh, DiMaggio really being able to pick off this, but uh, this uh, Bio Ball with uh, this many Medivacs should pretty much have a continuous healing effect and really preventing this uh, Bio Ball from dropping as quickly as possible. So one Queen drops, second Queen drops, and he will he be going for uh, this actual hatchery? I do believe he will. This hatchery is going to drop, sieging up these tanks at, at the bottom. DiMaggio not, he does see this, but he's not moving in for the tank. I don't know why he does move in for the tank. It's more than enough to take care of the tank. A little bit too late though, finally the bio ball moves down from that hatchery. And he should mop this up, even though if that fungal does get placed down very nicely. There's really not enough fungal being placed down, not enough chain fungal to take care of this. And Marine King decides that he has enough. He did plenty of damage, loads it up, and he's going to be retreating back to the actual center of the map where we do have that Zilnaga Tower. So, so far, so good by both players. I do believe Marine King is finally having an upper hand. We do finally have more of those Marauders moved in. Another scan to take care of the actual creep from its panning. He's going to be trying to recede this creep as much as possible. So, really key to keep that creep down as much as possible, of course. That creep is a massive advantage for uh, DiMaggio so far. Now, creep, of course, is going to be receding. So, finally, he's going to be moving in again. So, hopefully, he'll be taking good care of uh, this actual push. Uh, this time hopefully he'll be sieging up a little bit early on. I'm not sure. He is moving in again a little bit too late with the siege. Again that 2-3 extra seconds uh, providing a little bit of extra damage by DiMaggio but again his composition finally is consisting of a little bit more marauders so he should be able to absorb again even these fungals by uh, DiMaggio. So he will be mopping this up especially with uh, the heavy medevac build. He should be able to easily heal up his actual units and uh, move forward. What do we have? We do have the 2-2 upgrades for his actual marine builds. And uh, so far, nothing much is going to be happening in by DiMaggio. DiMaggio pretty much lost again his base, even though he's going for another composition. Uh, marine King is just pretty much picking off what he does require very, very easily. Again, more more auto streaming across the map, which he does need. No bailings actually in play here at all. So, again, DiMaggio not consistent with his actual production tab or his bailing since we do have a heavy marine build. But with the Marauders in play, uh, the Ultralisks do prove to be a little bit effective. But again, he doesn't have those upgrades as he does require, though. We do have those five upgrades while uh, Marine King is splitting them up. Again, a little bit late on this tank, but it doesn't really matter. Those Marauders will prove uh, to be very, very effective in absorbing. And uh, that's it. The GG calls it DiMaggio. And this is it for the third game. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And see you guys in game four. Bye.